So I'm getting a lot of questions lately about shots with low parallax. These shots are kind of problematic because synthize can't easily calculate an accurate position for your points in 3D space. And if your points solve incorrectly, then chances are your distortion is wrong as well. So I'm going to be talking about how I go about reconstructing a scene, how I get the, how I get the perspective, how I get my distortion, my focal length, and hopefully this helps someone out. Hope you enjoy. All right, so I have Synthize launched. I'm going to be using 1905 for this tutorial. And I'm going to go open up my footage, File, New. Got my shot here, first frame, Open. I just want to say real quick before I jump into this, I'm not going to be going through every single setting and how every button works. This is just going to be straightforward how I deal with this and hopefully, you know, it works for people. If not, just complain about it in the comments and next time I'll make a difference. So I'm just going to work in float. Uh, float lets me use all the data available in my EXR sequence. If you're using JPEGs or other, honestly, you're going to work with 8-bit most of the time, really. So I'm just going to work in float. And backplate, I have a preset for my Blackmagic camera. And if you don't have this, you can Google your camera and find its sensor size and type it in here. Pay attention to the inches and millimeters here. So I'm going to hit OK and let my shot cache through. All right, so here's my shot. It's playing a little bit fast, so I'm going to come over to View and Normal Speed, which I passed. So here's my shot. This isn't the most low parallax shot that I could have possibly have chosen, but this is going to work for pretty much any shot where you can see things and where you can construct things in 3D. So don't worry about, you know, this actually having enough free move for me to solve. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start tracking and I'll probably speed through this. So yeah, I'll see you in a moment. All right, so I've placed a bunch of points and on a shot like this, I could just hit play and everything should solve with no problems. I think I saw one point jump. Yes, I did. Hold on, I'm gonna control A, hit the plus button on my number pad and lock everything. All right, where's that point that I saw move? Right here. So this point that's jumping, I'll, cl I'll clean that up. But first, let me just hit F7. So I open up the graph editor and there I could see the spike in that one tracker. I'm going to select all my trackers. Just look at everything's velocity. Just to make sure that I'm not going to miss any other jumping tracker. And it looks like it's just that one. So I'm just going to unlock it, place a key, lock it up. There we go. Okay, so from here, I just want to show that I could solve. I could hit Shift G, solve this. If I hit F3 or L, look to camera, yeah, we could see we're moving. And also, I do have enough data that I can calculate distortion. I could turn on calc, uh, calc distortion, Shift G, and hey, look, it got us a pretty good distortion. I want you to pretend that you didn't see any of that and pretend that we don't have enough parallax in the shot. So I want to build this out and I want to drop these points into a mesh and tell them where they need to be. So. Uh, in the future, I'll probably do more tutorials like this. So if you feel cheated, then I'm sorry, I will do it again. So I'm going to come over to the Lens tab, and I'm going to hide this Lens Grid for now. I don't want to see it. I'm going to right-click, hit View, come down to Show Lens Grid, and let's go Add Line. So here, I'm going to start placing down some axes lines. I'm going to, again, if I don't, if I gloss over this too fast, you can go back and check out my basic camera solving tutorial. I think I explain it more there with a little bit more of a lazy voice. All right, so I'm going to click on a Y axis line. So I'm going to start here. Ooh, no, no, synthize. I don't want that. No. <laughs> All right. So I have my on axis uh, on what? Oh, it's gone. Synthize, come on. All right, let's do that again. <laughs> we have add line. I'm going to click and drag here. Let go on Y axis. And you'll see, you could see how crazy the distortion is with this line. This should be bent over there. We'll worry about that later when we have some more lines. And now I'm going to get a couple more Y lines. Ooh, I can't see up higher. So parallel to Y axis, I'm going to pan up. 
bring it a little bit higher. Cool. And let's see, are there any Y lines over here? Yes, there is. Parallel to Y. And now that we have that, let's get some X lines. So I'm gonna go over here. Again, you could place these lines pretty much anywhere on X axis. Now we'll get some parallel X lines. You only want to have one on axis line. Oh, by the way, I've chosen two axes to be my main lines, X and Y. You can't have a third. Synthize won't like that. So if you had an on Z line, Synthize will just kind of crap itself. Um, so pick your two favorite axes uh, that you have available in your scene and just go with the two. You'll see that we're going to use all three lines in a moment. Whoosh. Oh, I let that one go poorly. So parallel to X, zoom in, make sure that these line up. And uh, yeah, let's get one more over here. One more X over here, parallel to X. All right, so we have two axes and they're parallel lines. Now I mentioned you can't have a third, you cannot have a third on axis line, but you can have the third axis as parallel lines. So I'm just gonna click over here, drag out my Z line and parallel to Z. And maybe one up here. Can't really see too far down with the reflections. Parallel to Z. Cool, now that we have this, uh, I'm gonna turn on, okay, I don't need to see this lens grid. I'm gonna turn it on anyway, just so you can see this. So now the distortion. If you have a shot with very little parallax, very little movement, your and your your points aren't really gonna solve to the quality that they should for a proper distortion. So here I'm just gonna do this manually, and this may not always be the best because you there's special types of distortion that you just cannot eyeball. But here I'm just gonna come over to my distortion, drag this this spinner here, which if you're wondering, this is quadratic distortion. If I hit more. We can come in here, we have all these options, but we're only gonna deal with quadratic. That is the classic synthize offering. So I've dragged it until my lines match the bend. And if it's going a little bit too fast for you, you can hold control and now you have finer control over this spinner. And holding control or shift will speed and slow a lot of things in synthize. You just gotta experiment. So you can check out your other lines, make sure that they are all bending correctly. I like this. All right, so I'm gonna hit F3 so that we're in our 3D view because when I hit a line, I want to watch my grid just snap into place. Not because I have to, but because it's satisfying and it should hopefully show you this in a very clear manner. Also, our focal length is gonna change as well. So let's hit a line. Whoosh. Now we have this. And now the scene is suitable for us to start placing down some very nice clean geometry that we can project our points onto. So I'm gonna hit F2. Nope, I lied, I'm gonna hit F4. So I'm in quad view. And actually something I wanna say real quick. You'll notice that the perspective lines have, or the center of the scene has landed where our main X line and our Y line intersect, somewhere in the wall here. So I'm just going to drag out a plane and to drag out some geometry, I'm gonna come over to the 3D menu or 3D room tab, whatever you wanna call it, I can't remember. So over here, we have some geometry. I'm gonna come over, select the plane. Our magic wand is on, and I'm just going to immediately drag out a piece of geo. If you can't see through here, you can right click, come to view, and show, uh, ooh, what? Solid meshes. And now we have a wireframe. And one more thing, if you're looking at jaggy, sharp lines, come up to view and open GL camera view and you're gonna have some nice anti-aliasing. Now you got smooth lines. Love smooth lines. All right, so I'm gonna just scale up this plane now. I'm gonna come over here and take it Z and I'm just gonna crank this up to like 500 or something. Will 500 do if I drag this ahead now? 
Ah, oh, no. I wanted to reach the end of the platform. Let's go... 1,000 units. Oh, that totally made it. Oh, yeah, that went a little bit far. That's fine. That's perfect. And you can see that our faces are disappearing close to the camera. That is because in the camera view, your geometry is getting called out. So I can select our geometry and come over to this little number sign. And let's just give it some polys to work with. And you can see that we have a better display that's just, uh, of the distortion as well. All right, so I'm going to come over here, translate, move this over until the geometry, uh, or until the floor and the corner meet. Cool. And now I'm going to make another plane. I'm going to come to the magic wand, come to a side view, uh, this one here, I believe. Drag out a wall. And I'm just going to zoom in up from the top view, line this up to the geometry, come to the side view, line it up to the floor, and now you should see that we are, we formed a perfect corner. Okay. And now you can see our faces are cut off over here, so we're going to come over to the number sign and give it some divisions as well. Oh, I can't see it over here. There we go. Ooh, I kind of gotten nice quads here going. All right, so we've, we've gotten the perspective, we've gotten our focal length, we got the distortion, and now we want to actually get the solve. So when you have your points, or when you have geometry for your points, you can now select as many as you want. I, wouldn't, I would try to select as few as you can because the more points that you have constrained, the more that they will fight amongst each other. So I'm going to grab this, grab some up here, down here, and I got, let's get down right there. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to project them. Uh, just for the sake of you seeing this, I'm going to hit F4. And when I project them, you'll see them all drop into the mesh. I'm going to go track, drop onto mesh. Who knew that's what it would be called? Now that I've done that, all these points have seed positions. And a seed position is just a funny way of saying this point now has coordinates. If I go to the tracker tab, you can see we have seed and lock. And here is the actual position of that yellow dot. If I drag this around, oop, wrong axis, you can actually see we're moving that, that position. Um, yeah. <laughs> also, these points have lock point on. Now, if I hit solve right now, we're going, the camera and the points are going to gener, uh, generally place themselves as best they can. So if I hit shift G, okay. So this looks pretty cool. If I go F3, uh, turn on wireframe and I hit play, this at a glance looks pretty awesome. And it would actually work for some, for a lot of cases. But if we take a closer look, if I hit F4, looking at some of my points, you could see that they actually haven't snapped 100% to where they should be. If I look over here, oh, that's not as far off as I thought it would be. Oh, well, this is still pretty off. Sometimes it might be worse. Sometimes it might be perfect. So if we want to force these 100%, we have to come over to Solver, turn on Constrain, uh, and all the trackers are going to obey their seed and lock and just snap into place. So if I hit F4 and solve, there our whole scene has adjusted itself and all the points have forced themselves into position. Sometimes this is dangerous, sometimes it is necessary. But you could see that we have some pretty awesome point positions. So I'm gonna hit F2. Nope, sorry, F2. And this plane's kind of intense to look at. One second, I'm just going to select it, go 3D, color, give it a darker color. Let's go with a blue, I guess. Get out of the number thing. Uh, get another dark color over here. Okay, it's a little less overwhelming on the eyes. Oh, by the way, if you're looking at these red circles, just kind of ignore them for now. I'm going to turn those off. Those are tracking radars. They show you which points have the worst error. In this case, 
the worst error in my scene is coming out of my constrained points because since you since you've locked points into into a position, you've taken away Synthize's freedom. So Synthize isn't technically super happy with uh, what you've done. So overall, though, my scene should be amazing. Yes, it is point. It has an error of point one. These are these. All my points are are sliding on an average of point. Uh, like, like anyway, <laughs> barely take a pixel. It's barely sliding this much on average across across the whole shot. Oh man, I shouldn't be making tutorials. So anyway, even though the error of these rings are big, this is relative to the solve error, which is overall amazing. So these points are actually amazing as well. All right, so anyway, that's about all it is. Uh, now I'm just gonna refine my camera, give it a smooth, and call this done. Because if we zoom in on my camera, give it a play, you could see that there is no filtering. What I'm gonna do now is come over to filter control, X, Y, Z, apply filter. I'm just I'm just gonna hit it once. And then reset the filter. Always reset the filter because every time you hit go, it will always apply this if you have anything set. And you don't want that to happen because that filter did not fix the rotations of the camera. So now that I've smoothed the path, technically the rotations have not been updated. So we're going to keep this smooth path, but we're gonna resolve just so that the camera can adjust its rotations ever so slightly. So I'm gonna switch over to refine mode. Automatic gives you your initial solve. Refine mode is, is, is gonna solve a lot faster and work off of what we already have. So I'm gonna come over to axis locks. Turn on, oh, make sure you do this on the first frame because this will animate. Turn on position, so now your left, right, up, down, forward, back. Your camera movement is now locked. Um, but it's gonna lock to whatever this is, the, the seed path values. The seed path values is going to be your smooth path, but we gotta load it in. So we're gonna hit get. So we're getting that smooth path loaded in. So now when you hit play, this is your smooth path. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, I can't speak. <laughs> All right. So we have position on, constraint on, refine mode, hit go. And you can see things have changed slightly, barely. And yeah, so now we have a very smooth camera path. If I come to F4, 3D, get some geometry and make a matrix. I can make a matrix right up against the camera. And with this, uh, the point of a matrix, uh, matrix is so that you can see if there's any jittering or popping in the camera path, like close to the camera. So if you had like simulated snow, rain, or spores in the air, any particles floating by camera, uh, this will show you that those spores and stuff aren't going to pop around. So yeah, that's about it. And let's uh, jump this back to the face cam. Wait, sorry, one more thing. Uh, let's just go summary, lens workflow, and uh, I'm just going to hit redistorted too. Okay. And there we go. My distortion is applied. Oh, I was going to play it one more time, but now it's caching. This tutorial almost, almost ended cool. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, if you want to suggest a shot that I do a stream on, you can go ahead. I stream on the other channel, Track VFX Live, uh, or just... Type in the comments if you want to see anything covered in a future tutorial, and yeah, I'll see what I can do.